All right, guys, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to take my angle grinder over here. Got a cutting wheel on it. We're going to cut about a third to a half of the way through this plate, and that'll make it look to where it's really easy to bend for us. After it's all bent and mocked up, I'll put some gussets on each side, and then I'll come back and I'll fill in that bend with a little uh, small bead of weld, and it should be plenty strong. Um, it's just going to make it easier to bend. I don't have a press to bend this in, so it's doing it all by hand. So here we go. Looks like it needs to be a little bit more. What I want to do is have it come in underneath this plate or this bar and uh, bolt in. I'll probably either thread it. It looks looks pretty thick, so I'll probably do a hole and a tap and uh, just have it bolt in that way. So let's go do a little bit more bending on the vise and come back and we'll mark right here where I need to bend it to be. So I couldn't hold the camera and mark and hold this in place at the same time. So we've got our bend here. This bend's perfect. Um, I've got my mark here. I'm going to just cut another groove along this face. And we're going to bend this down to be a 90 degree, or pretty close to it, bend. And then same concept as here. I'll fill in this, this void with weld. I'll do the same here. And if there's room, I'll put a small gusset. Um, Probably don't need to guess it on this one since it's going to be so close to that bar. But we'll go ahead and get it cut and fit it one more time. Then we'll have two holes to drill here. guessing uh, turned out pretty perfect um, that's exactly where I want it that was that was pretty lucky so I can put a gusset here it looks like I can maybe put a small one here I might just try and uh, do some really strong welds good high heat setting and see if I can get it in there so I'm gonna go ahead and weld these up we're gonna trim the tops up here for this bracket because there's no reason for all that and uh the last thing i want to do is be messing around back there one day and cut my hand so let me go ahead and do that but this bracket's pretty much good to go It is all finished up. The only thing I have, well, I'll tell you, it's not finished. I still have to drill two holes here, but other than that, it's good to go. One more view of this bracket here. Here it is installed. And on the bottom. So I'm just going to mark two holes right down here. And once I get those holes marked and drilled, I'll transfer those holes into the tube. And then I will uh, tap the tube for the appropriate size bolt. And it shouldn't move. All right, guys. So I was trying to figure out what exactly I was going to use to screw this in there. And I went through my bucket of bolts and I found some old screws that I think actually came out of this Samurai. So I found out that they are an M8 thread. And I happen to have a nutsert tool that has the inserts. So I went ahead and put it in there, 
here's the tool if anybody's interested in buying one. Um, they're not very expensive. I just figured since I have one, I'll use it. Um, you could definitely do this with just sheet metal screws, or tap and die. But uh, I did not have any bolts that were the same size as the taps that I have. So the next best thing is nuts hurt to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the holes drilled. All right, y'all, so we got the holes drilled. Everything's good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and install this bracket onto the motor, and then I'm gonna line it up down here with this bar and mark my holes to be drilled on there. Okay, so we got the holes drilled. Got the nut cert loaded onto the tool. Let's go ahead and get it in. like the shaft's gonna line up just right. Um, everything seems to fit well. We've got good angles and everything with our bracket. It's a little bit of a pain to put in, but it uh, it does work. Alright, let's get our steering wheel back on, or at least hold it in place. Get it all lined up here. And we're gonna take a rod Slide it down and line everything up until it hits inside there. Take our Sharpie and we're going to mark right in here where the end of the steering wheel is. Now this could be, could be spaced a little more I guess, but we've got a mark so we've got a measurement so the existing shaft coming out of the controller so right here I've made a mark for the total length from the current shaft to the steering wheel and it's uh, right at about seven and a half inches maybe uh, maybe seven and a quarter let's go with seven and a quarter um, so we've got our existing shaft here and that measurement is going to be to the tip of the splines. So the steering wheel will sit flush on these splines. That's where that measurement will be, so that's where we're going to start. Um, right now we're looking at about 10 and a quarter inches. And we need to be at 7 and a quarter. So we've got 3 inches we need to remove. So I can take an inch and 3 quarters out of the bottom here. So if I can take an inch and a quarter out of the shaft that's coming out of the motor, I'll be able to weld right here, this edge of this collar, this is the locking collar, into the shaft that's coming out of the motor. So it's time to take it all back apart and do some more cutting and welding. All right, y'all. I measured exactly one and a quarter inch to this line on this end. That'll give me one and three quarters on the other end. We should be at the right length. Cut it up. All right, and on this one, we're gonna cut flush with this lip. Got everything all welded up. Should be plenty strong. I did it on the highest heat setting the welder has, so it uh, should work out all right. We've got everything loosely bolted together. I can wiggle it back and forth and jiggle this bracket. 
So what we're going to do is go ahead and put this in. I have to leave everything loose because after I put the nut certs into the tube, it was so tight of a fit, I actually had to grind the bracket a little bit thinner. Looks like I've got it figured out for the back part. Um, I put the old bottom half of the steering shaft into the joint here and I just let it hang underneath the dash. I went ahead and put the motor back in, lined everything up, and it fits right about here. And I got to thinking and that's gonna be a pain to get in because it's all going to have to line up just right and just perfect. So um, I noticed that this comes all the way out and this is what slides inside the ends of this uh, shaft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this piece to the electric power steering motor. So all I'm going to have to deal with is this little section right here and actually my shorten this a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this a little bit lower than this line probably at the tip of my finger here and then all I have to do is line these two pieces up slide them in and we'll, we should be good to go so I'm gonna go get to cutting and uh, do a little welding and we'll go from there these two wires. This is just a positive and negative wire that go to the uh, motor and this connects to the control box or the computer. Same with these four, they connect to the computer. So I've got my all my connectors here. I had to go buy a few more last night um, from Lowe's and once I get this extended we are going to find somewhere to mount the computer underneath the dash. Um, once, uh, once we get that done, we can put it in and do a test. Okay, so we got it all wired up. Um, I had to end up soldering it because the wires are too small to do any kind of crimp connection. Um, so we've got the green wire to the black and the red to the blue. And they're paired together with electrical tape here. So that way I can't uh, cross up the two different sides. There's two different sensors in here that uh, relay information to the computer. And I've got it uh, safety wired here to the body so it can't be pulled uh, in case something happens and the motor goes crazy and rips this mount somehow. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get this installed. And I've got the shaft here. So I'm gonna get it installed and uh, we're going to see where we can mount the box. I'm guessing it's probably gonna be under the hood here somewhere. Um, I'm not too much too worried about water. I don't really go through deep mud or anything. I usually stay to the rocks, but uh, we'll go ahead and get this mounted up and go from there. I'm probably gonna have to cut here and here, which is gonna make this a little flimsy. And then I'll come back with a piece of uh, plexiglass or something and uh, pop rivet it back into place. So let me uh, get the cut. I'm not going to take this entire dash out, that's for sure. Let's see if we can just maybe do that. Sneak it by. Let's try that first. A couple of sides. Y'all, 
so we are completely installed. Got steering column in. Everything's just temporarily twisted together. Um, I wanted to make sure I hooked it all up right before I spent time soldering. Um, everything else in here is good to go. I did have to loosen the uh, booster to get everything in, so I will be uh, probably building some sort of spacer to go back here to keep it lifted up. So it's got this knob here, and as you can see, and as you can see, that's just regular factory. But if I turn it up, let's say about halfway. Now I'm looking at one finger. Spinning just fine. And if I turn it all the way up, out pretty good. I'll go ahead and finish up the wiring, get this solid mounted uh, down here in this hole, and I'll finish up the brake booster. But that's it for this install. Hopefully that'll give everybody a uh, idea of how to do this in the future. And I will put a link in the description below of this little control box that I ordered. It's from a guy in uh, Portugal that makes them, he sells them on eBay. So without that box, this whole system wouldn't work, but I'll, uh, I'll put that in the description below and I'll also put a description for a, uh, I'll also put a link for the Nutsert tool as well if anybody's interested. Thanks for watching. Like and comment with any questions you have, any suggestions you might have for people that are looking at this in the future, that'd be great. Um, if I had different color wires, I would definitely suggest using those. But that's what I had, so that's what I used. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.